what does the the future hold as far as Indian equities are concerned? What is your outlook, near term uh, and long term? You see, Indian equities, what I am seeing is this, that today, if our economy is going to become five times, in that by 2025, that's McKinsey report says that, you know. Assuming it's not 25, 2027, whatever it is. What is the ratio of GDP to the market capitalization? You know, today market cap is 1.6 trillion dollar and GDP is 2 trillion dollar. Mm. If it becomes 5 times, it becomes 10 trillion dollar, the market cap should be 8 trillion, 8 trillion dollar, as mm. simple as that. At least 8 to 9 trillion dollar. So I think that, you know, I'm very bullish on India. There's no question about it. But we should not, and this government at the moment is taking the right steps and direction. Mm. If you look at the central government, where is the corruption at the top? All the corruption is not there now. You know? And so Modi, what he had said, you know, he has delivered on that basis. Mm. So I think what I am seeing is this, I was talking to you know, one of the uh, senior person in the ministry, and if you look at the income tax department, what I am hearing is this, that everything be online. Yeah. And therefore, the income tax officer also will have to ask question you online. And there is no need to meet the income tax officer by the assessee. If that happens, the corruption in the level at different mm. level also will reduce. Mm. So I think what India wants, India needs and wants is this, ease of doing business, sure. facility to the all the taxpayers, you know, and should get a red carpet treatment. Mm. So I think those kind of things will also bring foreign investment substantially. All these messages are going abroad. Right. It's not that it's not going abroad. Uh, let me come to you now. Uh, uh, you've just heard what Mr. Kampani has had to say. Your questions or comment for him? No, as Ramesh very nicely put it, that he has been inspiration and he has been one of the catalysts for Indian capital market for the last three decades. Maybe I'll have his views. Uh, maybe I'll have two, three questions for him. One is, what has been the most exciting time for him personally and what has been the most toughest or a disappointing or a difficult time for him and for India? And how does he look at India in the next three decades? Okay. So let's start. And Indian capital markets, yeah. Let's start with the first one. The most I think, exciting... And I the think most my most exciting time was in 1980 when I got a challenge of doing telco issue. Telco is now Tata Motors. Yes. And you will not believe the capital market has grown from that day. Because the company wanted to raise 47 crore of rupees by way of a convertible bond issue. The last issue which was there in the market was about 4.5 to 5 crore. We were Southern Petrochemical Industries and Mangalore Fertilizer. Mm. And this company wanted to raise 10 times the money in the market. Every year, market was raising only 50, 60 crore of rupees. And one company wanted to raise 50, 60 crore. And then we got a mandate from Tata's to do that job. And we were sole banker to that issue. And I remember very distinctly that the first time in India, there were 47 investors' conferences all over India. We organized that. I went to government, Ministry of Finance, because we saw in the Reserve Bank regulation that priority industry can raise money from non-resident Indian with right of repartition. And so I asked for a permission. After a lot of discussion, we got the permission from Ministry of Finance. And we went for a roadshow to 10 countries in the world. We filed a prospectus in London. We were in the whole of the Middle East, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Sarjah, you know, and all these uh, other, say, Kuwait, Bahrain, etc. And we had about 15, 16 roadshows over there. And we raised the money. And the government of India, the secretary, control of capital issue, called me and said, Dimesh, you've got the permission. Now you raise the money. <laughs> Don't just keep the permission. So I had to go to Telco, the export department. And I asked them, where do you export your truck? Please tell me. He said, Africa. I said, no, no, Africa. <laughs> it's the Middle East. I said, okay, Middle East is okay. Southeast Asia, okay. London is okay. So this is the way we went about and after that, the Reserve Bank guideline came because I said, now you allotted the shares, the debentures, if you, somebody wants to sell it. And all the non-resident Indian guideline came first. That's how the whole market got created. Indian market was created by Tata Motors. That's the way I see it, you know. Okay. And that was exciting time for me. So that was the most exciting. What was the most challenging? 
the most challenging uh, you know there are a lot of challenging things you know we we don't we have time sir you can you can <laughs> <laughs> mr sonawala is sitting here you know you can ask him <laughs> I've been very, I've been already warned that I can't ask Mr. Sunawal any questions. So that googly you can't throw my way now. I, I throw it right back at you. <laughs> no, I think uh, the the most challenging was also TCS because TCS has a huge market cap. They didn't want to dilute 25 percent. There was no guideline that you can. You know, make a lower than 25 percent issue to the public and get listed. Mm. Mr. D. R. Mehta was the SEBI chairman. I went to him. I talked to him. I said, "Sir, but this issue may not sell. The 10 percent issue is becoming 3,000, 4,000 crore. So you know, you have to raise 12, 13,000 crore of rupees, and a company does not need that kind of money. So why are you forcing?" And then after a lot of discussion, and Mr. D. R. Mehta has a good style. Mm. He will call, you know, Pratip Kar. He will call Dharmista Rawal. Everybody in a room and say, "Nimesh Bhai is saying this now. What is your view?" Huh. And it was so embarrassing for me. <laughs> so after the meeting is over, I go to their room and say, "Sorry, I have not called you. I have not called you." <laughs> Because I said, next issue of mine will get stopped by then. You know. <laughs> and then finally, he saw the merit, and he agreed to do 10 percent issue. You mm-hmm. know? And then with that 10 percent issue. You know, we went to the road show, and Hemendra was with me. You know, on that deal, and uh, we finally got the deal done. And Mr. Tata was very fair. You know, he in fact reduced voluntarily. You know, the price. Mm. You know, when we were, we were negotiating finally as a banker in the company, he said no. You know, I will give some benefit. Mr. Sunawala and Mr. Tata both said they will will give some this thing to the investor. And then rest is the history. TCS has done yes. so well, so well. Investors are very happy. So that was the most challenging. I'll ask. Uh, I'll add a third to uh, Nirmal's list. The most disappointing. Oh. Disappointing from which point of view? Because I don't have disappointment in my group. <laughs> we always done a good issues. You know, they have done well. Even the transactions mm. we have done successfully. Mm. So, so no disappointment are, at all in over three decades. None whatever whatsoever. Whatever we have touched, it has become gold. <laughs> I I hope I hope that luck uh, is something that everyone else is is uh, sort of favoured with as well, uh, Mr. Kampani. But uh, Mr. Shroff, any any uh, questions or comments or stories? Uh, another sort of outstanding uh, quality of Nimesh Bhai is that. he never refuses to accept the status quo as a sort of a roadblock to a problem so we've done so many including the first book built issue nimesh if you remember that uh, when, a, when we were moving away from a capital controlled environment with the cci to a price discovery mechanism and we sat down together on terms of what was then the guideline and we worked out together of how you can actually bring this new regime into the law was completely against you So one of the things which professionally I've seen working together and sometimes across the table is he would refuse to accept the status quo and he would work in a sense above the guidelines or above the law and then make it happen, whether by talking to the regulator or talking to all stakeholders and in that entire process keep the trust of all stakeholders. I think that is the real legacy of Nimesh Bhai, of being able to a build trust and b change the and innovate uh, continuously on a. deal by deal basis and that's what i have learned personally uh, working with him so yeah. it's been a great privilege yeah.